Well, howdy, folks. Great to see you. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Wednesday, April 24th. Which means, you saw this coming, tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we're on now for about an hour and a half, taking requests from investors like you. I share hot stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to bring a hot stock to us. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now, to be completely fair, I got to let you know, if you're dropping your tickers during the show, I'm never going to get to them, and it's nothing personal. Fact is, I've got to put up a placeholder for this video earlier. I got to announce I'm doing it so that people show up. Well, people start dropping their comments and tickers then, and I do go by first come, first served. I can't think of a more fair way to do it. So by the time four o'clock rolls around, I've already got all the tickers I can handle. That is to say, if you've got a stock you really want me to look at, drop that ticker in the queue before four o'clock, way before four o'clock. Plus, that gives me more time to go over the information for you. That's four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, every Thursday. So what I like to do on this show is to share some personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock that I found through the day. I trade penny stocks every single day. Those are stocks under five bucks and you can find them on every single market. And I'm always looking for stocks that have heat, that have potential to make us money. And I got one for you today, of course. This is ticker YYAI Connects Sports Technologies. Now, this company caught my eye because she's going through a lot of transitions. What really caught my eye was the transition that happened today. She changed her ticker. Her old name is Connexa Sports Technologies, but her new ticker as of today is YYAI. Now, they changed the ticker for a good reason, to align with their new operations. The company did a merger a month ago. It was a change of control, a change of operations, and is going to greatly change their financials. That's why we're looking at the company. So YYAI, she finished today just a little over 88 cents, and she was just shy of 21% gains. Now, this is a penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with a host of benefits compared to the OTC. One, all transactions are free. You'll never have to pay buying your shares or selling your shares. Two, you can trade pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with the OTC. Three, there's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchange. And four, it's safer. They've got a lot of rules they force these companies to abide by. And one of those rules is the minimum bid price requirement. This states that major exchange stocks cannot go under a dollar and stay under a dollar for too long. If they do, they could get kicked off the major exchange. So what happens is they normally get a warning from the NASDAQ saying you've been under a dollar for too long, get it up. How does the company fix it then? They really don't. It's up to the investors. We've got to bid that price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. We do that, it's all good. We're out of hot water. If we fail to do that, the company's got one of two choices. Either let the company fall off the major exchange down to the OTC or enact a reverse split. Which do you think is more likely? Right, a reverse split. And that is a situation we are going to be talking about here in a few minutes. So what is Conexa Sports Technology all about? Well, they used to be about sports, primarily pickleball and tennis. And that's what all this information is about. But none of it is relevant anymore. That is all ancient history now. So all the information about what they're doing is in the news press that we're going to take a look at, and we're going to wait till we get to that before you find out what it is they're doing. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice jump. I'd say we've got about a 60% increase there. Over the last 30 days, we've been averaging about 5 million shares a day. Today, we jumped to 8.3 million shares. We've got some excitement brewing. Share structure for YYAI. Well, that's not bad. Outstanding share count is about 36.5 million. The insiders own about 12 million of them. That leaves us all the rest, about 24 million. Presuming all of these numbers are correct. 
Now, if they are correct and they do do a reverse split, that is a low outstanding share count to be doing a reverse split on. So we could end up with a super duper low float after this if they go through with it. I think they're going to. Market cap for the company, we're at about 27 million. Financials. Now keep in mind, this is all old news now. This is the money they were making dealing with tennis and pickleball. That's all done and over with. As you can see, their revenues were up and down. They were just over a half a million dollars four years ago. We know that's a half a million because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. They did well in 2021, kicking that up to almost 20 times, almost $11 million, then up to 16 million, and then dropped back to 9.9 .9 million. And they were bringing home profits. The quarterlies, they're up and down as well. A year ago, we were at a low of 1.6 million. In July of 2023, we we're at a high of 3.1. And at the end of January of this year, they had just about 2 million, bringing home more than 50%. But this is all old news. Where were they standing at the end of January? Well, they had 17 million in the bank. Assets, a total of about 22 million. Total liabilities, about 17, 18 million, which means we did have positive stockholder equity in this company of 4 million. We probably still do. Let's dive on into these disclosures now. We do have a lot of information over here and we're not going to dive into it. If you're interested in all the details that pertain to this merger, that 10KA there is loaded with details. You can also get more information up here in the pre 14A. Now, we are going to tag into that pre-14A when we're looking at the news, but right now, I want to share this 8K with you. Now, I'm not going to pretend I fully understand this. That's really why we're looking at it, because I don't. Part of the deal for the companies to merge was that Conexa had to get rid of some of her assets, had to divest of them. Well, one of them was Slinger Bag America. Well, it looks to me like they were selling that by selling a bunch of warrants for $2.5 million. They divest of their asset and got $2.5 million for it. That sounds like good news to me, but the very next day, the 19th, the stock plummeted. It really fell hard, and this was the only information out. So I don't think I'm understanding it correctly, or the investors didn't understand it correctly. Now let's go take a look at that news. There's not a lot of news to look at. We've got one piece back in March. This is about the merger. That came out on the 21st. And then we had a piece of news that came out today. This was about their ticker change. And that's all the news we got. So let's dive into this merger piece that came out on the 21st. Conexa announces entry into an agreement to acquire 70% stake in Wanu Enterprise Management Limited. Now, before we dive into all of this, who is Wanu? They tell us down here that Wanu operates across the rapidly emerging love and marriage sector. <laughs> I do believe this is the first stock we've ever looked at in the love and marriage sector because I didn't know there was a love and marriage sector. Did you? Yem owns numerous patents, technologies, and algorithms that drive its big data and matchmaking analysis, deriving its current revenues from royalties. YEM has multiple licensing agreements in place for non-Asia regions and in addition plans to open subsidiary companies in their core Asia markets. That's where they're primarily working, is in China, but they are expanding into other countries right now. Now you've picked up on it. This is a matchmaking app. It's a dating app, folks. And you're thinking, really? We're looking at a dating app? Well, this is unlike any dating app I've heard of, and I think it's in the right place at the right time. We're going to read this, but I'm going to tell you right now, they're involved with AI. I think that's outstanding. AI can work with a lot more information than any other sort of programs we've got. But more to the point, they have got buildings. They have got lots of places you can meet people in, actual brick and mortar buildings, over 200 of them. They are also involved with the metaverse and augmented reality so that you can meet people online, but not online. You know, you go to the metaverse, can actually talk to them if you still don't want to meet them in real life at one of the buildings. 
So they tell us here that Conexus Sports Technology has signed a definitive share purchase and share exchange agreement to acquire 70% stake in Wanu Enterprise Management Limited for a combined value of $56 million. Now the transaction is being carried out in two steps with the first step already happening. They got the first 20% stake having completed the payment of $16.5 million in cash. That's done. The residual 50% stake will be completed on the closing date. We don't know when the closing date is. And all of this information, they never actually give us a closing date. So that's speculation. Hopefully that's going to be soon. They go on to tell us that as part of this deal structure, there will be a change in control of Conexa following the appointment of new board of directors subsequent First, they've got to get rid of Slinger Bag Americas, which will be divested to a newly established entity. Now, again, I don't understand all the details, but that part's been done. They have divested of Slinger Bag Americas. They tell us down here that the company was established in November of 2021. They are based in Hong Kong and operate in the emerging love and marriage market sector where it owns significant proprietary intellectual property unique to this business sector, covering its online presence and underpinning its matchmaker operations. Yem owns six technologies related to the metaverse and nine AI matchmaking patents, which together enable access to both augmented reality and extended reality, further enhancing its future revenue growth potential. YEM has already proven its business model in the China market, where its licensee partner operates 200 hand-in-hand -hand branded retail stores across 40 cities. That's the name of their matchmaking site, Hand-in-Hand, -hand. and one of their operators has 200 facilities in 40 different cities. One-time subscriber matchmaker fees of the amounts as high as $1,500 provide the subscriber with a bespoke matchmaking service delivered through face-to-face -face interactions across their owned stores. $1,500. God, do you know how many first dates I could go on at expensive restaurants with $1,500? They tell us here that Yem's retail operation sets it apart from its prominent competitors who are simply online, right? With storefronts expected to grow to $1,000. In 2024, this year, currently we're at 200. They want to add 800 more. And the 10,000 within three years. e gads. Increasing the registered subscriber base to over 3 million in 2024 and in turn, rapidly growing the revenue base. Now let's talk about revenues. Yem collected royalties of around 1.9 million year ending January 31, 2024. Doesn't sound like a lot of money. And has already established license agreements covering the UK, Europe, Southeast Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa with a cumulative contracted revenue over the next three years in excess of $70 million. Now we're talking. Now, I don't know how that's going to break down. And you've got to keep in mind, that's projected on where they're at right now. They could do a lot more growth in the next six months and kick that number up three times. We have no idea. Now, I told you we were going to jump into that pre-14. This is it here. So what this really is, is an invite to their shareholder meeting. They are going to have a shareholder meeting May 15th. If you want to be there, you have to register no later than May 14th. This is the web address you use to register. Now, they're voting on a lot of different proposals, and all of them have to do with this merger. They're actually voting to approve the merger as well, which I would have thought was already done, considering that they've already paid $16.5 million for 20% of the company. So they're voting on lots of different things, but these two things pertain to the stock, which we need to be aware of. They are going to be voting to increase the authorized share count from $300 million to $1 billion. So they're going to more than triple the authorized share count, which is the bank. This is the absolute most shares they have. They can use the shares for a lot of different things. 
public offerings. They can put them on the market to make money. Private offerings to big investors. They can use them as currency to make deals with other companies. The other piece of information we need to take regard with is they are voting on a reverse stock split of no less than 110 and no greater than 1 to 100. Now, they say there's good reason for this. Actually, four good reasons. Why is Connexer proposing the reverse stock split? The board is submitting the reverse stock split proposal for our stockholders' approval to fulfill a closing condition of the acquisition. We don't know what the details are, but it is one of the conditions of closing this deal. So there's one reason. Two, to re-qualify for initial listings under the NASDAQ initial listing rules due to the change of control of our company. I honestly don't know what that's about, but obviously they needed to do something with their share structure as far as NASDAQ was concerned if they wanted to remain on the NASDAQ. They're doing it. The qualifications include having a bid price of the shares of our common stock at the time of listing of at least $4. Another condition that I don't understand, but when this is all done, when they're on the market on the NASDAQ, the price is going to be at least $4 or above. Completion of the reverse stock split is also part of our plan to comply with the NASDAQ bid price requirement. Yeah, we got to get that price up over a dollar. Now, they're close to a dollar right now. They're at 88 cents, but they could easily fall back. This is going to give them a lot of grace room. But the most important thing about a reverse stock split is it puts the stock in front of new clientele, investors that won't look at stocks super duper cheap. So we're lifting the stock up to a different audience. We'll get more investors coming into it. That's the plan. So if they do a one in 10 and we got 36 million, that means that we'd have a float of 3.6 million. If they did a reverse split of one in a hundred, we'd have less than a half a million shares and they'd have to do a public offering right behind it because you can't have any less than a million shares in the float on the NASDAQ. So this is all going to be voted on May 15th. So between now and then, we don't have any problems. After the fact, we're going to have to wait and see how the vote turned out. All right, let's go take a look at this chart now. So let's chart ticker YYAI. This is Connexus Sports, and we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Got this opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. It was five months ago we had a real impressive high of $10.70. And then at the beginning of the year, a real depressive low of $0.14. Cents. Now, I did some due diligence to find out what caused this rip. This was September 19th. She was down here at three bucks, crushed the 200, screaming all the way up to $10.70, well over 300% run. Well, what I discovered was the day before, the 18th, an 8K came out about a stockholder meeting results. And one of the things they voted on was a reverse stock split, and they approved it a 1 to 10 up to a 1 in 40. Now, I looked around to see if that has been enacted. I could not tell. I can't see it anywhere, so I don't know if they've actually done that one. And I know now they're voting on another one on May 15th, a 1 in 10 up to a 1 in 100. So I'm a little confused here. But what I see is after that big rip, she came down and bounced off that 200 and had another big rip. Came down again and had another big rip. She keeps having these big rips as she's falling, coming down underneath the 200. And then right at the beginning of the year, she went flat. Now, we had a bounce here, a pretty decent bounce, actually. She went from 20 cents to just shy of 80 cents. So almost a 400% run there. Maybe that was the split. I don't think so, though. She came back down, and she's been sitting with all of her SMAs knotted together here for a couple months. And then here at the beginning of April, she started to run. Without any filings, without any catalyst, she just started to run. She was down here at roughly 20 cents and went all the way up here to $2.70. You're looking at almost 1,200% run right there. She then crashed falling back down here to the 20-day SMA, which she bounced off of getting another good rise. And then 
on the 19th, that 8K came out about the warrants and them divesting of their uh, Slinger Bag America. And look what happened. She fell from $2.42 all the way down here to 60 cents. Holy cow, folks. And now she is whipping around, starting to climb. Our 200-day SMA has moved up a notch, but all of our other SMAs got pulled real hard, and now they're coming down on top of her head. She is actually still climbing after market hours. We can see the volume was real strong during this climb, got weak, and now it's starting to pick back up. Our oscillators look like they're in recovery. Our PPO has already hit her bottom cusp and is now starting to turn up. We have already had a positive crossover on our MACD. Green bars are starting to come into the picture. And we finally come off the floor of our RSI. And we are currently at about 44, which is pretty cool. I don't like to see the RSI below 55. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Whoa, look how flat that is. 19 cent low, and then she just started to climb. And look at the volume getting bigger and bigger. Boy, that is a beautiful climb. Every single day floating on that nine day SMA. We had a couple tags onto the 20, but not many. Then she fell all the way through, hitting the 50 day SMA solid, bounced up off of that, almost hit our high again, and this time she came deep underneath the 50. Got back on top of the 50 and started the climb for a few days, and then came out that 8K about the warrants and them selling slinger bag, and boom, we had a big crash underneath our 200-day SMA. Looks like we hit a bottom here, and we're starting to come back up. All of our SMAs that were on our head are now down here with us and are all starting to turn. Our 50 is starting to turn up. Our 20 is already turned. Our 9-day has crossed the 200 hall. We're waiting for the 200 to turn. But things have stopped falling, went sideways, and are now starting to climb. Our oscillators, they're not looking bad, right? Our PPO is on a slow incline. It is growing, just like our MACD is. And our RSI now is clear up to 62. That's a lot more heat. Taking a look at our five-day, five-minute. Wow. Wow. All right, we had a lot of volatility here. She was underneath the 200. She got up on top of the 200 and started to work her way away from it. She was bouncing, making headway, and then she had this big fall at the very start of the day, falling from 234 down to 82 cents. Fell some more aftermarket, fell some pre-market, and then she had a bounce. Things People were thinking she was going to recover. She didn't. She came back down, and she looks like she was trying to do a breakout right here, folks. The price got close. It just seems like common sense when the 200 gets that close. You should try to break out. She tried. She got up there. She laid there, fell back just a little bit to her 50, got up on top of that 200, and now she started climbing. Pushed way high here to our high today of $1.07. Came back down, and she did not hold. This should have held her. We had our 200 and our 50-day SMA, 200 haul, that is, and our 50-day SMA. She crashed very hard. Now, she's dangling in the air here. You, you don't bounce in the air. So I'm going to pull this back to 15 minutes. I'm going to see if she's bouncing off something there. There you go, right? She got up on top of the 200 on our 15-minute, laid on it, started to work her way away from it, and then fell back down and bounced off of our 200, and that's what gave her her support. So looking at our five-minute, she is not just dangling in the air there. She actually bounced off of the 200-day support on the 15-minute chart, which she was laying on right here, and it is starting to turn around. This looks like it's in recovery mode right now, folks. The merger deal is going to close. We don't have a date. Hopefully, it's going to be soon. They didn't make as much revenues last year as this company did, but they've got a lot of business on the books that is starting up right now. And they say they're going to be making $70 million over the next three years. Now, is that going to be broke up evenly over the next three years? Are we going to get like uh, $23 million a year? That would be a heck of a lot more than this company's ever made. But again, I remind you, they can expand more between now and three years from now, increasing those revenues even more.
I like the chart. I like the news. I like everything coming together right now, but it's going to need some more due diligence from you folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.